Hello and thanks for joining us on the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Deb Gillard, your host, and today is Wednesday, February 22nd. We're very glad you're with us, whether it is on cable TV in the Owatonna area, of course, Charter Channel 8, or whether you have found us online, blip.tv, or maybe you've searched through Google, you can find us that way too, Owatonna Today Show, and you'll eventually end up at blip.tv. Owatonna Today Show goes in the search box and Leanne will always have three weeks of programs archived for your viewing or to direct somebody else to if you know they are not in the area or get charter cable. We of course welcome your information as well, guest ideas, show topics, info that you want us to pass along about events that are going on in the community that we do at the end of each program. You can take note of our email address and cell phone numbers on the screen throughout the course of the program and uh, go ahead and shoot us an email, probably the best way to get things to us, and we look forward to hearing from you. We have a very good show for you today. Uh, when we come back from our first break, we'll be talking with Tanya Paley from the Safe and Drug Free Coalition, um, all the things that they have had going on and are looking forward to into the future. Brenda Bednar joins us later on in the program from Summit Mortgage. So we'll take this break for our supporter. And by the way, we do welcome back Steel County Food Shelf as a supporter of our show. Um, so we'll take this break for some of our supporters, and we'll be right back. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead & Company, Certified Public Accountants. We support the Oatana Today Show. Greetings from the site of your History Center. As you can see, construction is almost completed and we expect to begin moving in during January. We still need your help to raise the funds needed to burn the mortgage and reimburse our investors. We hope you'll consider a donation towards this new chapter in Steele County history today. Welcome back and thank you again for joining us on the Owatonna Today Show. It is Wednesday, February 22nd and as I mentioned, Tanya Paley joins us. Welcome back. Good morning, Deb. It yes. It is always nice to have you here and talking about the Safe and Drug Free Coalition, which has been in existence now for how long? Well, let's see, about a year and a half or so, okay. with the grant at least. Doing so. good work. We always have you on here talking about things that are going on. Yep. Um, something recent, there was uh, something in Washington, D.C. that happened recently for you, notable. That's right. We uh, just finished our first year of pretty intense training with other coalitions around the country, and we all got together for a national convention in Washington, D.C., and um, Evelina Giobi, who's my uh, United Way director and project director also for the coalition, she represented us and she got a nice diploma that we're going to put on the wall. But more importantly, we were able to really find out what are the challenges other communities are facing and how are they doing with with those challenges and okay. get some good ideas so we're I guess re-energized. I was not aware and perhaps our viewers were not either that there there is a network there is a national coalition mm -hmm. of coalitions is that the way yes, to say it? There is a network of okay. coalitions it, um, and folks are always welcome to go to the website and see about that it was it's called CADCA C-A-D-C-A -A, mm -hmm. uh, and they provide the support for us so if we ever have a question we go to we go That's to them go. and we also have a network of folks that did the training with us all across the country. And then one thing that's been really fun is that our, um, re we're developing kind of a regional network with Fairbo and Albert Lee okay. and talking about things we can do just in well, our region. Well, that was going to be my other question. I, I would imagine that being that it's a, a, nationally, a national support uh, coalition, that it probably involves everything from very large to very small cities. That's right. Uh, but yep. maybe to compare against obviously mm -hmm. regionally and then maybe cities of similar size would be very important as well. That's right. Yep. Some things maybe will work no matter what the community is mm -hmm. and other things really need to be tailored to the community. And, okay. Um, yeah. So. Well, congratulations. And thank for you. For going out there. And of yeah. course this is a, a huge support um, from the United Way here in our area. They are just wonderful in terms of housing us and providing extra resources and uh, a lot of the folks that work on our coalition also are involved in the United Way, so it's a really great partnership. Okay. Now we probably had you on a couple of months ago. Anything that you want to recap that's happened since then in the last couple of months that 
Well, let's see. Actually, yesterday afternoon we had our first Youth Advisory Board meeting. Okay. We were headed towards uh, that. We were headed towards that. So we have a, about 12 um, young people from high school that okay. are coming from across the county. And uh, they got to meet each other yesterday and start getting to work. It looks like they'd like to work on tobacco-free parks. So okay. we'll be hearing more from them. All right. Um, yeah, so that's one thing that has happened, and uh, let's see, our parents group has been very busy. They mm -hmm. had a, a class in January for parents, which was really well received. Yep, I think well that received. was last time we talked that's as well. Right. That was coming up, so yeah. those are going very well. Yeah, okay. so things are moving along. Okay, and how about plans for the upcoming year? Well, um, in terms of general plans, we've moved to a quarterly meeting, so our next one will be April. I believe it's April third, Friday, April thirteenth. Okay. Um, and it will be at those. the yeah, it will be at the fire hall from noon to one thirty, and you'll, you'll we'll be talking more about that. But w our idea is to bring a training in each time, mm -hmm. so that um, it will be open to the public and. Um, so people can stay updated on all of that on our web page, which I know uh, is on the screen here, mm -hmm. will be later, and it's uh, steelcountysafeanddrugfree.com. Um, we have a nice front page that gives a calendar and all kinds of things that are happening okay. upcoming. Yeah. Okay. Were you, I think there was also some involvement with the, um, the community ed. Has that class happened already? It did. Okay. Yes, that, that happened was, at the end of January. And that was good. And, and that I was think, well received. And did the Safe and Drug Free Coalition have a presence at the high school conferences as well here at Owatonna? You know, that or was... was that a different... We, that's a partnership with the high school. Okay. So their, their chemical health team that they've put together um, they, they organized that um, parents' meeting okay. and brought um, Mothers Against Drunk Driving down, which is a great resource for all of us. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so we're working closely with them. Okay. A lot yeah. of good partnerships here in the and community, And I should say too. one more thing that's happening is we're training um, Owatonna teachers um, for Project Northland, which we've talked about on this show before. Mm -hmm. It's our alcohol prevention curriculum that will start in... Willow Creek in just a few months before the end of the school year. Okay. So getting that tr teacher training going. So good. That's a good. little snapshot of all the different things that that we a lot do. Of things keeping you busy, and there are reasons for it. And some of the things we want to talk about today are some um, stati is some statistical information about what is happening um, with prescription drugs. Right. So prescription drug use and abuse, or recreational use, I guess I would say, mm -hmm. has been in the news lately with a couple of celebrities. And um, I think it's a chance for us all to talk to each other about this issue. And so I thought it would be a good issue to, to mm -hmm. talk to folks about today. One of the things that we know, and um, I brought a little, some facts with me just to, just to be able to speak knowledgeably about this, but um, one in 12 high school seniors uh, reported on a, a recent survey. This was 2011 and it was a national survey. So okay. this is just nationwide. But 1 in 12 are using Vicodin and 1 in 20 are using Oxycontin. Just, you know, not for the, not prescribed to them, not for the purpose that it was meant to be. So, mm -hmm. you know, that sounds like kind of a small number, but still significant. Sure. So, uh, that, and one of the things that we also know is that um, the supply of those pain relievers has really ballooned in terms of the availability. So um, it's in our medicine cabinets mm -hmm. and it's in our homes. And, um, you know, when they asked these young people where they were getting these pain relievers, 70% of them said they got them from a friend or a relative. Okay. Um, you know, there's also kind of a a little bit of a market for it, Ooh, okay. um, you know. So, so um, one of the things that we've been talking about is a coalition, and of course, it's not just pain relievers. Um, people that are taking ADHD drugs, like mm -hmm. Ritalin, that's another one that I've heard a lot about that lately. Abused, yeah. it, that gets abused. Um, I actually did bring in a little chart that talks about all the different um, that all the different drugs that do get non medically used and. Um, what I would say is, first of all, on this chart, it kind of gives you a little bit of a, a benchmark. Marijuana is here with 35% of mm -hmm. um, teenagers using that. Okay. This is 12th graders here. Um, spice, which is that synthetic marijuana, mm -hmm. is on this chart too, so that would be the next bar. And then as you look across, you see uh, Vicodin, Adderall, tranquilizers, cough medicine. What? Yep. Okay. 
Um, and that's obviously not a prescription drug, but uh, something that uh, parents need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, then we see they put in the, the kind of the hardcore drugs here, ecstasy. So you can see, for example, when you compare ecstasy to, say, Vicodin, it's much lower. Mm -hmm. So we hear a lot and we're concerned a lot as parents about those street drugs, but maybe we're not talking to our kids enough about, um, hey, it's not cool to have somebody share their pain reliever with right. you. Right. Even if you're feeling sore and you're supposed to be playing a sport today and you know, yeah. somebody suggests that they, that you take this, it's really, there are lots of reasons why that's not a safe idea. Right. And there's a reason that these are prescription drugs and that you have to get screened medically in order to And to that they're controlled. And, and as mm -hmm. you mentioned with the celebrities that we hear about, they, they, is it an addiction or is it a dependency? I mean, they are addictive sure. type of pain relievers. Right. Well, and w you know, it's kind of the same mechanisms that, uh, that people get addicted to other things. The mm -hmm. body um, responds initially a certain way to that, and then um, tolerance builds up, and sure. you want more and more of it. And um, so that's kind of, you know, that's a, that's a possibility even for folks that are kind of taking it here and there is that, you okay. know, you can run into that problem with addiction. So those availabilities of some of those things like the ADHD medications mm -hmm. and the pain relievers are, are definitely more available than they might have been at one time. They are more available. And so there are a couple things we can do. One is that we can make sure that we're, if that's in our home, that we're locking it up or, or keeping an inventory of it mm -hmm. um, if we need to be taking it. And of course, many people do need to take these medications and have legitimate reasons sure. to have them around. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing, and we've talked about this before, is take it to the box, and that is our prescription disposal program. So in Owatonna, that's at the Law Enforcement Center on Pearl. Right in the front entrance where you can get that's to 24 right. hours a day. Yep, just toss it in there and we'll take care of it from there. Um, and the third thing is uh, that we've been working with pharmacies to spread the word, and we're really excited to have a partnership with the Owatonna Hospital Retail Pharmacy. Okay and a new partnership with Sterling Gr Drug here in town. So hopefully you'll be hearing more when you fill your prescription about uh, safety and keeping it locked up. Okay, Tanya, thank you. As always, great information and more than we can usually cover in the yeah. city, which is why we have you coming back. So thank you very much thank you. for your supportership and for your work in the community and for this information today. Great, thanks right. for having Best me. Best of luck as we move forward into 2012 here. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you. We'll take a break for our supporters and we'll be right back with Brenda. Hi, this is Barry Gillespie, president of ERA Gillespie Real Estate, where our pledge is to save you money, save you time, and simplify your life. And we're proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. Don't let the cold winter weather stop you from exercising. Keep up your fitness program at the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center. We offer a variety of different membership packages available in daily, monthly, and yearly basis. We also have a variety of programs and services to help the newest of members get started and help those who have been around for a while improve on what they're doing. The Tennis and Fitness Center participates in insurance reimbursement programs with a variety of different insurance providers that could make you eligible for up to $20 credit each month. For more information about the West Hills Tennis and Fitness Center, call us at 444-4290. Hello, I'm Dr. Wilbert Pino and I'm the new orthopedic surgeon at the Mayo Health Systems Owatonna Clinic. I'm a general orthopedic surgeon who relocated here with my family starting January 9th. My areas of specialty are uh, pediatric and spine surgery and I do um, general orthopedic surgery as well. I look forward to meeting you and um, be of service to you if you have any orthopedic needs. Hi, I'm Amy Swain of Amy Swain Hearing Centers. I know that buying a hearing aid can be confusing and difficult. My job is to make that easier for you. With 18 years of experience with many different brands of hearing instruments, I can help you make the best choice. Remember when purchasing a hearing aid, you are entitled to a trial period, and during that trial period, if you are not satisfied, then you can try a different brand or style. At Amy Swain Hearing Centers of Owatonna, Austin, and Waseca, we believe you deserve to hear better. Hi, I'm Stormy Trom, reminding you that March is Food Share Month. Please join us for the 19th Annual Hometown Sampler Concert at the Little Theater of Owatonna on March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, benefiting the Steele County Food Show. Enjoy the musical offerings of the Bad Tangerines, the Gogs, Hot and Bothered, and the Mile 5 Band. 
Admission to the hometown sampler is a cash or food donation to the Steele County Food Show. Our goal is to raise $92,000 during the month of March. Help us kick off Food Share Month by attending the hometown sampler. Welcome back. Thanks again for joining us on this Wednesday, February 22nd. And Brenda Bendar joins us from Summit Mortgage. Yes. We had a name change kind of fairly recently. We did in November. Welcome Everyone back. at Advisors Mortgage joined Summit Mortgage. Okay. And why do those kinds of things happen? I know we see them all the time yes. in the business world, but mm -hmm. for instance, what, what, what did that mean? Why did it happen and what in fact are the are the uh, good things that have happened because of it right well the things that happen in the mortgage industry or the banking industry is that um, the regulation is increasing or becoming more uh, present mm -hmm. and so smaller companies are have to having to join with larger companies and summit mortgage uh, one of the advantages is we have is that it's the largest non-bank lender in Minnesota okay so I help us understand those of us who might not what mm -hmm. non-bank lender actually means um, it just is a under a different set of federal regulation. Okay. So. So when you're talking about a bank lender, you're talking about well, just for lack of any, right. let's say a U.S. bank lender or a Wells True. Fargo lender, they're operating under different guidelines mm -hmm. than a non-bank lender. That's correct. Okay. All yeah. right. Good to just make that clarification. Makes it a little bit more simple when it, we need to be. Yes. Yes. Um, people might be wondering now what is is going on i mean the the interest rates are low very low you are i'm sure talking with people about refinancing yes. presently and how is that area of the business going yeah, i'd say refinances are very prevalent interest rates are at four percent or better mm -hmm. in most cases um, we even have adjustable rate mortgages uh, below three percent wow um, and lots of the advertising on tv is with the lower than three percent so we'll get a lot of calls what is the 2.6 percent that mm -hmm. i see on tv um, so that's a prevalent item right now as well as there's a lot of purchase business um, okay. there are home buyers out there who are taking advantage of the low interest rates as well. Okay, let's go back just a second to the refinance and I okay. think that we were we were having a little conversation ahead of the uh -huh. program about appraisals. Yes. Do you need to get an appraisal? Is that keeping some people from even asking about it? You know, what does that mean to someone who's looking at refinancing? Right. Um, you know what is on a case by case scenario, but I do I get a lot of questions about it or I hear there's apprehension that uh, I know my house won't appraise so I'm not even going to consider uh, refinancing. There are many programs out there that allow what's called a streamlined refinance where you do not have to have an appraisal. So it's at least worth calling, checking. And asking about. Absolutely. It doesn't cost anything to ask to find out for sure whether or not you need an appraisal. Okay. But an appraisal itself mm -hmm. actually is only good for a, a pretty short window of time. Very really, considering 90 days. The market. Okay. Yeah. So if I had an appraisal four years ago, obviously the market has done some interesting things and has changed, that's not going to be valid. That's correct. Even if it's just a day outside of the 90 days, the uh, bank or investor will require what's called a recertification, which could cost another 100 to $200. Okay. All right. But again, it's at least worth asking it about is. what is happening. Here's my situation going through the scenario with you. And I exactly. know you're really good about asking all the yeah. right questions to find out, okay, is this something that we should, should maybe look at or, or that you could look at and exactly. see if there's a potential. Yep. And her task. Right? No, it can't. We no. also are seeing purchases, yes. as you mentioned. So there are... Um, there are mortgages out there. There are people buying homes. As uh, some of our viewers know, I'm in the real estate business as well, and so yes. I work frequently with Brenda. But um, there, you're hearing too, and we may be hearing sometimes that mm -hmm. there, there are homes that are there. There's not a lot of available homes, and right. somebody might say, "Well, I see all the for sale signs. Right, um, they're out there." But we're talking about maybe a segment that may not be able to meet financing. Exactly. So. And so what we mean by that is that a lot of the home buyers or the first time home buyers are approved for a low or no down payment home where there's some government requirements on the property that it has low maintenance issues or that the customer is not going to get into the home and have to incur a large amount of mm -hmm. um, remodeling. They can basically get into the home and get used to their payment, not have to incur a new furnace, sure. the cost of that. Um, so what we're lacking is homes in the, say, eighty dollars to $130,000 range that are in um, good condition. Good condition. Great condition. Okay. 
so they are not it, and some of what we see is uh, things that are not going to finance there's entire flooring missing in yes. the house or something like that someone cannot move in under those circumstances and like you said not have to incur an additional costs right. in order to make it habitable right. really or the seller in those situations who might be a bank because it's a foreclosure are not willing to make those improvements to get it saleable to that target home buyer okay so there may be homes out there in those ranges whether or not they're in good enough condition to meet financing. That's correct. There are all types, and you referred to that right now, all different kinds of financing out yes. there. Maybe somebody visited with, uh, visited with a lender and they said, well, I can't, I can't get a loan. I hear yeah. that I have to have 10% down, but that's not necessarily no, true. I think that's a large misunderstanding, um, you know, statewide, if not nationwide, that a person needs 20% down to buy a home. Um, we living in Steele County and the surrounding rural counties get to take advantage of still the rural development program it's mm -hmm. a USDA sponsored program with that you can have um, no money down and it doesn't have to be a rural property so that's, I'm just gonna say sometimes when you yeah. attach the word rural to it they think they have to be buying a piece acreage. of property that's outside of the city limits and is rural property but that's not what it means these no. are houses right in right. Steel County yeah. or in Owatonna in the the little cities that we have here yes, in Steel County exactly it, there's no um, limitation on where it's located in the county. It's just a regular city block okay. property. And that's actually a zero down Zero program. down. Um, you can even get your earnest money back in appraisal back at closing if you'd like. Okay. And um, granted, you have to have a credit score of roughly 640 okay. and better. And for a family of one to four, you just can't make over $82,700 for okay. you know, the year. <laughs> $82,700. Exactly, and, yeah. Okay, maybe a penny less, but not right. anymore. Exactly. I know there are particular guidelines that you yeah. have to meet. FHA financing is mm -hmm. out there too? Absolutely, 3.5%. 3.5%. And, half percent. Half percent. and um, I've also heard from a lot of customers that they're saying with conventional mortgages, they thought they needed 10 or 20% down. And we offer as low as 3% down conventional mortgages. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so there, there, you know, there are so many things we hear. I know. Here, we hear, and we may be hearing news as you were mentioning before we were talking the program. Um, when we talk about things like rural development loans, if you're hearing news from the Twin Cities, they don't get that. That's correct. So if you're talking to somebody in that area, they they may not be able right. to work with the rural development loans or to really know much about right. them. Right. Right. Even locally, right here in Owatonna, for example, not all banks are credit unions can do USDA loans, the okay. real development, or FHA loans. So just because one company says no, you might want to check mm -hmm. another one. Okay. It really pays. Yeah, it really pays and it doesn't hurt, as we've said a couple of times now, to ask the questions and right. see if there's another option that you right. have available somewhere else. Yep. If you, um, interest rates we talked about just I mean, the, those being phenomenal mm -hmm. right now, and that's across the board, whether it's refinancing into those interest rates or yeah. or looking at a home purchase. It is really, really a great time if you're able to find a home yes. that finances or work with. I know there are some repair loans that they Rehabilitation. can Rehabilitation, so you right, can like, buy those homes that are not in good repair yeah. and still roll in some of the improvements. I get a lot of questions. Even this morning, I had someone say, well, isn't the interest rate higher on that type of loan? Um, at the most, the increase would be a half a percent. So you're okay. looking at a change from 3.75 to 4.25. Okay. Still phenomenal. Okay. And, and I know there are terms that get tossed out there. So we would be talking about an FHA 203K yes. or something like that. So there's all these acronyms and things, and you may not know what that is but that is specifically for that, to finance right. in some of the repairs that Absolutely. may help you to purchase And nine house. times out of ten, if a customer calls and mentions rehabilitation or fix-up, mm -hmm. we know what they're talking about and can kind of... Okay, or even them. if they refer to the property and you're right. able to go take a look at it, of course, being exactly. from the area. Um, if someone comes into you, if they say, okay, well, my credit score is is not that. It's not mm -hmm. what I need to be to get into a home right now. Right. Um, I know personally that you have helped a number of people who, who maybe aren't ready right now, but they can get ready and you're able to right. offer some advice there. Right. It, it doesn't cost anything. It's just based upon the experience that I have or we have um, on how to get credit scores up, kind of looking at the algorithms that the credit reporting agencies are currently looking at. Mm -hmm. And they're easy tips. Just, oh, did you know that your $500 credit card here, um, you're overutilizing the credit. Why don't you try and reduce that down to 30 percent and you know what you're going to see an impact an increase in your credit score within 30 to 45 days. Isn't that amazing? It is. So someone could actually be that close but not in thinking they're not able to. Now other exactly. times there are longer fixes there potentially. Yeah. Somebody may have to work on 
getting rid of some of their debt right, and doing some things. Or something. Right. But I know you'll take a really close look at those things yeah. too and help get them there. Yep. It may take three months, may take six months, may take a year. Mm -hmm. But until you start on it, you're not going to get there. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. So I know Brenda's been really great about uh, providing some good advice for those who, if not now, when. when. Exactly. Um, and then helping them along that road. So contact information. Yes. How do they um, get a hold of you to ask all these great questions? Yeah, our office number is 507-455-1858. Okay. My cell phone is 213-1433. You can now apply online at brendabednar.com. Okay. Or my email is bbednar at summit-mortgage.com. Okay. And you are located here in Owatonna? Yeah, 214 South Oak. Okay. Great. Brenda, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. It sounds like a great change to Summit Mortgage, and we'll look forward to having you on again. Thank you for your Thank supportership. Thank you very much. We'll take a break for our supporters. Back to wrap up. Hi, I'm Molly Titchenell, manager and personal trainer at Snap Fitness, your 24-hour fitness solution. Snap Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty with the Sterling House Assisted Living, a part of Brookdale Senior Living. Our mission is to enrich the lives of those we serve with compassion, respect, excellence, and integrity. We are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Jan Hansen, and I am at A Plus So and Back, the fun place to be. We are proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Elaine Benson, and I play Muriel Eubanks. And I'm Steve Searle, and I play at Lawrence and Jameson in LTO's current production of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, directed by Juliana Skazaciak and sponsored by the Wanger Foundation. Performances of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels will be held Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, February 16th, 17th, and 18th at 7.30 p.m., with a matinee on Sunday, February 19th at 2 p.m. And again the following Thursday through Saturday, February 23rd, 24th, and 25th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available at the LTO box office by calling 451-0764. Don't miss LTO's production of Dirty, Dirty Rotten, Rotten Scoundrels. Scoundrels. Welcome back. It is time to wrap up the show here on this Wednesday, February 22nd, and we remind you of the program at Riverbend Nature Center this Saturday if you're interested in uh, finding out more about bugs in winter. Give them a call at 332-7151. A lot of great programs going on there. If you have not yet been to see artist Sandra Dowd's exhibition in the gallery at the Owatonna Art Center, you want to make sure you do that. It is on through this coming, it would be Sunday, February 26th, at which time I'm sure they'll be uh, going through a change for the month of March. But it's a figurative exhibition, and of course the gallery hours are 1 through 5, Tuesday through Sunday, and they are closed on Mondays. So take advantage of that if you would like. The Owatonna Hospital Auxiliary is hosting a Pizza Ranch fundraiser um, Wednesday, February 29th from 5 to 9 o'clock. This is your chance to come out to Pizza Ranch, of course located at 142 West Broadway Street. Enjoy a meal, meet some of the auxiliary members, and then a portion of the proceeds made that night will be given back to support your local Owatonna Hospital Auxiliary. Mon monies received from this particular fundraiser help support Owatonna Hospital unbudgeted items and scholarships for students in nursing and health-related fields. If you'd like more information about this or volunteer opportunities with the Owatonna Hospital Auxiliary, who we recently had on the program, go to owatonnahospital.com, select volunteer opportunities under the quick links, or call them at 507-977-2778. We have the 19th Annual Hometown Sampler Concert Series coming up Friday and Saturday, March 2nd and 3rd. I'm not going to go a whole lot into that because actually they are on our Friday program. So as always, get, we'll get to find out a little bit more about how the event's going to go this year and get a little sample of music too. That is always fun. Also on Friday's program, we will be talking Brewfest for Culture Fest, another event coming up on March 16th. So with that in mind, we will see you on Friday. Have a great day.